I started Revisionaries as a graduate student in studying documentary filmmaking. And I was interested in the um, edu science education in general. I was more specifically inter interested in evolution education, especially in Texas. So I set out to film teachers, science teachers teaching about evolution. I wanted to explore not only the technical side of evolution, but I wanted to talk about the sort of philosophical implications of evolution and how it, the sort of relationship between religion and science. And I sort of got rejected from the classroom a bunch from administrators who felt like, well, no, evolution's a very controversial issue. We don't want to touch that, you know. Um, so I ultimately had, had to switch focus, um, uh, sort of chose the path of least resistance. I started going to the Board of Education meetings because I actually read a New York Times um, uh, uh, article that mentioned the State Board of Education was reviewing science standards. So I start going to these meetings and I originally thought I would have the science classroom and the teachers on one hand and then intercut that with board meetings. But I slowly got pulled into these board meetings and the characters that were involved in the political aspect of science education um, and realized that I could make a much better character portrait than I could a science documentary as NOVA or National Geographic can do these things. They have the resources to do it much better than I could. What I had was the access to a few key individuals and what was a, uh, I wanted to encourage the good, not discourage the bad. I wanted to focus on a science teacher and profile that teacher. Well, I didn't really have the access to that. I got the access to a creationist. And, and so I followed that route, and he became the lead character. And, um, you know, the rest is sort of history. Don McElroy really made this movie. He supplied the entertainment value in a lot of ways to where we could put in board meetings that were often slow and boring, but sprinkle in a little Don McElroy and you have a real movie there that people are entertained and informed by. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, so one thing that's fascinating too is so you set out to sort of make a short and this became a four, four-year project, is that correct? Yeah, four years all said and done. Um, I was in grad school for two of those, those years. I extended my grad studies for another semester because the equipment room... Uh, equipment was such a, a great deal. But um, no, so I, then I continued. I moved to New York um, with one of the producers and worked with an editor up there and really bumped the project up. I had some producers from New York contact me when I was finishing up the grad studies and had a film on the science, the politics of the science education. Meanwhile, I get a call from the Texas Freedom Network in Austin saying, hey, looks like the social studies are becoming more controversial than the science. And I thought, how in the world can that be? And so I started following the social studies meetings. They had these producers contact me about joining in. And the, the project grew from just science to science and social studies now. And um, I also had the more funding to where we could get a professional editor and graphics and things like that and really help us move towards a more professional product. Excellent. Now, um, you... Uh, debuted the film at Tribeca. Am I getting that accurate? Yes. I got all my facts from the internet. I know how tenuous <laughs> that, that would be. Have you been surprised, um, happy with the response that you've got from the film? Absolutely. More than happy. It's gone so much bigger than my expectations. I would have never thought that it would have done so well. Um, but part of that was realizing it really took a group of people to make the film. Um, every person you talk to from the beginning, you know, you're doing research, you're talking to somebody, they're going to lead you to somebody else. You know, it takes a village to make a documentary film. It really does. It's a team of people. I used to think I could do it kind of guerrilla style and do the editing myself and the whole story. You have such a, a more, you can communicate to so many more people when you have a group of people making something and offering critique throughout. Um, to where you're not sort of trapped in a box um, with a message that may mean a lot to you but doesn't speak to the outside you know, audience very well. One thing that I find fascinating about the film is, is you, you, at least from my perspective, you don't take a stance. You show what the actual is going on. Yeah. Was, was that a difficult thing for you to not inject personal uh, bias or opinion it, on it? It was and it wasn't. It, it was in that um, it was difficult um, be, because obviously I'm watching this and just furious just like most viewers when they see what some of the creationists are doing attacking 
not just evolution, but science. How, what the, the definition of science. Um, and then later on with um, the social studies, Thomas Jefferson, separation church and state issues. So in, in that regard, it was hard for me to hold back. But in a way, I'm sort of a beginning filmmaker. So in the interviews, I couldn't really challenge these veteran politicians um, as good as maybe you know a more experienced documentary filmmaker or, or interviewer could. And so I just laid back and let them talk. And I realized my true weapon was the length of time I could get and the patience I could get. And just stayed there after board meetings and, and just slowly worked on building the relationship with the characters and filming with them as much as I could. Access to me over time and that trust was more important than getting them to, you know, challenging them to, in an interview set, you know, setting and, and getting them to say something truthful. Well, to me, the truth came out in their actions and was much more apparent. It just took the time for me to, to wait it out and be there at the right moment to capture it. Was there ever, over those four years span, a, a documentary film, it, it's always, unless it's an event or something, it's difficult to say, this is where I'll start and this is where I'll end. Yeah. Was there ever a moment where you're like, okay, we're done, we have what we need, this could be the film? There were several points. After I finished the science, the last thing I wanted to hear was that the social studies was more controversial. I knew I had developed the characters and gained the trust of the characters to where if I stopped then, I would really be missing a big part of the story because seeing the political actions of what they did in the social studies really mirrored what they did in the science, only multiplied somewhat. So it, it, I had already worked so hard to get that. I wanted it to really pay off and play out in the social studies, um, you know, and really use that access that I had. But there were several points where I thought I was done. Um, at one point, I thought I would just do a character short portrait of Don McElroy. And realized no, the issue and is too important. We want this to be about the issue. So we ultimately settled on having a character story with the political issue as the backdrop. But all along the way, there were points where you you think, oh, is this the end? And really quickly, I always think of a. There's a documentary called Word Wars on Scrabble players, yeah. and there's the main Scrabble guru that always kind of wins, and he's given a lecture to all the other Scrabblers, and uh, and he says, a lot of people will ask me. When do I know it's the right, to play that last tile, to play that word? When do I know it's the right word? And he's like, you just know. <laughs> kind of like this, like, I mean, it could end at any point, you know, um, uh, and maybe there are more significant times. There are also built-in times in, in, the, in the narrative structure that lead themselves to a climax. For one, that's the vote. A political race has that that conflict built into it. Any kind of competition or race, you have a, a beautiful little arc there that you can work towards and there's a finale um, that's pretty blatant. But so many social issue documentaries like Vessel and others that we talked about, they just kind of follow a character and they have highs and lows, um, but often they don't have the traditional structure of narrative films have, which is that you know, you're really working towards a climax and you know about that climax within the first third and all of these other story techniques that I tried to apply to um, revisionaries after the fact. Because and have, yeah, and you have Errol Morris taking that to another level of just sticking the camera right in something. Right. In face well, and yeah, it. really. I mean, and that's what I talk about veteran documentary filmmakers, people who can really get you to say, the tr give out the truth in an interview, long interviews with McNamara, Fog of War. I think they did like 10 interviews, all a couple of hours each. But of course, that's his structure. I mean, he watches that thing and builds the structure on the interview. So. And he's got. The, have you seen his rig? He's got, he's built like. What do they like call a it the, Instead of a teleprompter, it's his face. Right. It's yeah. So, so. Yeah, and you know, people have tried to mimic that by you know filmmakers getting closer and closer to the lens to where, you know, it's just an aesthetic. It feels more newsworthy when it's like kind of angled like it is now, whereas when it, you're talking more towards the camera, it feels. You know, audience may feel it's more like they're talking to them, more personal, um, may feel, feel more like a portrait piece. Back to the subject of the film, do you, do you feel it's important, and this is going to be personally biased, so you, I mean, feel free to answer this <laughs> how you want. So much now it seems like science has been attacked, education is being attacked, NASA is losing its funding. We've decided sort of in this country that those aspects of our, of our culture and society aren't as important. I, at South by Southwest, I went to the Cosmos deal with Neil deGrasse Tyson, yeah. and one thing he said is scientists are so timid to fight back because they think facts will always win. 
I think revisionaries is a good example of the facts they don't, that don't always, always win. win. How important is it that films like revisionaries, shows like Cosmos, that science embeds yeah. itself into our society? Uh, it's the reason why I started making the documentary, communicating science effectively to the public. It's not just good enough that it's a fact. It's got to be a compelling fact. It's, I mean, unfortunately, right? I mean, we wish we lived in a perfect world where the facts kind of ring true to everyone and they eventually got there. But one of the things Neil deGrasse Tyson said to Richard Dawkins at one point on a panel discussion was that um, he was afraid, he said to Richard, I'm afraid that your message may get lost to potential, you know, some, a potential audience that you could reach, but you know, the hard atheist front that you have with the science kind of maybe scares a lot of people away. And um, Tyson said, you know, communication of science, effective communication of science is not just the facts, but the facts mixed with, um, you know, something compelling to the person, appro properly appropriated to that audience. And mixed together, the facts become more effective when they're sort of catered to the audience. So I started Revisionaries wanting to focus on a scientist communicating science well and that character lived out in the form of, of Ron Weatherington, the anthropology professor, who I thought did a wonderful job of communicating to the board members, certain board members to have some political influence. So important. Um, Alan Alba, the, uh, the uh, um, actor um, recently, he's an actor working with scientists right now to help them communicate science better in more conversational um, colloquial terms um, and uh, to, to get the science to the public. Absolutely. So, so this project was four years, that's a lot. What's next? Have you, is there a, are you thinking about staying in the realm of social documentaries? Is, are you wanting to expand out? I mean, I imagine being in school, being in graduate school even, you sort of have ideals of what you'd like to do and mm -hmm. what kind of films you'd like to mm -hmm. make. And then this film sort of forced itself on you in mm -hmm. a way. Mm -hmm. And then it's like people might expect the same thing from you, right? Yeah. So what, what Carved out a niche. I really did carve out a niche in political documentaries. And I've been working on some other political documentaries. But I've sort of always wanted to return to the fine art world. Um, I originally started a documentary filmmaking program with the intent to do portraits of artists. Um, or at least that was what was most fascinating to me is personal, you know, characters who are artists. Um, but I, uh, I, you know, I'm being pulled in a lot of different uh, directions. I think that um, it, I, I think my, my ideas start from just reading the paper or reading magazines, reading articles online, um, and just being fascinated with stuff. I, I would say that the revisionaries, there are three individual films pursuits that I would take. One being character-based stories, like on, you know, interesting people like Don McElroy, who I'm following now. There's an Amarillo artist who is an interesting person. I'm doing a portrait piece on that. There is the political aspect of Revisionaries, which I extended and did a documentary on public school finance um, and some other things politically related down in Austin. And then um, thirdly, I think, is the science. I'm just a huge science buff, and so I'd like to do, excuse me, uh, some, I'd like to, you see it so well in the lights, too. Um, I'd like to do a piece on um, cosmology and different aspects of, you know, um, just the search for extraterrestrials and life on other planets. And, and just recently with recent discoveries about, you know, our universe and the Big Bang and the way our universe is expanding and all that stuff to me is really cool. And I have to find a creative way to do a story on that because again, Nova and other people like that do great science documentaries. I want to find a cool character or somebody that can, I can follow through that path. It's something that I could do that Nova perhaps maybe doesn't have the time to do.